Yeah, very big welcome to you, my dear Cancer. So, the sun is in the lovers. And the moon is in your sign. So I decided to now use the cards before I was using Rider Waite to explain where the sun is and where the moon is. And now I like to use the deck respective to each sign that I picked. And so you can see now we have the Lightseer Tarot and Alistair Crawley. So the sun in the lovers gives you the power to recognize that self-love is important and we see how she's holding on to the dark but isn't she the dark so he is the dark and she is the light and the hair what's happening with the hair right isn't she supposed to be like this when the hair is like that so recognize that Gemini is speaking to you through this card and of course with you I gave you the chariot also then the high lounge the success to go and find your success whatever that means for you you can see the lungs because that's your body part and here are the arms and the hands important and that's why I picked also for Gemini, King Pigeon, because we use the arms in that to get back to the feet. And the feet are the subconscious. Okay, so we have Gemini Sun highlighting the Cancer Moon, and that's the story today for your reading. Your court card is the Queen of Cups. If your birthday is between June 12 and July 12, then this is your court card. As you can see, she is not recognizable. It took me a moment to see that actually her head is here in this swirl of infinite potential. And you are really water and water, and we can see how the lotus flowers are growing how you are almost yourself now a lotus flower because you're the healer you're water and water and here is your court guard from alistair crawley usually i showed you this one and here as you can see she's not looking straight ahead she's looking to the left spinning path just that you know today you get a right spinning reading which is connected with the earth spin around its own axis every 24 hours and on your full moon which is in your opposite sign which is uh, capricorn you getting a left spinning reading which is connected with the wobble the earth does around its own axis which lasts 25,800 years we divide it through the 12 zodiac signs we get an age of 2150 years and currently we go from the age of Pisces to the age of Aquarius. Your last reading, Taurus Sun, highlighting Cancer Moon. It's time to recognize that your actions are important for all. You have here the Queen of Wands, you had the Time Master and you had the Sun. Um, sometimes I just pick three cards out of the reading <clears throat> and that's what I picked last time. So recognize that everything you do is important because you are, like I said, the Queen of Cups. You are the healer and you can help us to heal tremendously um, through these times, to these difficult times that we're going through. Now, Gemini is ruled by Mercury and so the message is of self-love. And you are ruled by uh, the moon. And so you are getting the moon as a mother. Not like in Pisces. Pisces is also ruled by the moon. But in Pisces it's like self-loss, right? And so here you are recognizing that your success is connected with a deep love. A love that 
brings the mother to us, the grandmother, the healer in that respect of the high priestess, which is also connected with the moon. I got a new deck that I'm incorporating now, which is the Lifruma Healing Oracle. It's connected with the Anglo-Saxon rune alphabet. And so I'm always very intrigued what is coming up here. And I pull this overall um, message on camera so that you see. And, and one chord is the one. I use my left hand because it's my intuitive hand, my inspirational hand. Look at that. The number 59, so you have five, the Taurus energy and the nine, the Virgo energy in here, and yarn entwined is the word, the rune letter is here and I'm going to read to you what this card is saying. Frick weaves golden threads of love into the destinies of all beings so we may tangle our heartstrings with others. Occasionally these divine yarns wrap and wind together two souls of mirrored frequencies, predestined emotional ties reaching back to the birth of love and singing with harp-like perfection. Let the sound of two hearts vibrate, entwined as one and keep spinning a tender talismanic threat for another in eternal ecstasy. Wow. <laughs> There we go. So something is spinning, something is being knitted and the knitting thread is Gemini bringing to you the opening of the hearts by reaching into your subconscious. So let's see what this reading is going to bring to you through this overall message already. You're getting a taste and we begin on the position of the fool. Here comes the Five of Swords. And the Five of Swords, whew, Gemini is the Swords, right? So I guess there is a message through Gemini already to not fight because this is Venus in Aquarius. And Aquarius is the age that is coming upon us. And the age of Aquarius brings a lot of quarrel, a lot of problems, mental problems, because Aquarius is the king of swords. Aquarius is the mind. And so you begin to understand that the fool here is bringing to you, look at him, he's like this very powerful, and there are so many mystical messages here in this card, and it's like, you just got to recognize that this one sword that is pointing up is crossing the four and the quarrel of the five, which is in the five here of the yarn. The intertwining of two people. And I see a bird here that is holding this yarn. And where is the other bird, right? And it's like reaching up to a higher consciousness. So it's not the partner that is going to give you the love and the fulfillment that you are hoping to get. It's that understanding deep within of this 5-5 five -five connection right now that you begin to understand that all problems begin within yourself. Then on the position of the magician which came up in your reading, so I'm going to have to take it from the deck, is the staff. So the magician is holding the staff very clearly in his hand and the staff is coming as the number 51. 
And so you getting immediately here a 5, 5, 5 with a 1 and the 1 is the magician. And the 1 sword Interesting, right? So now there's a police car. I don't know exactly. I think it's a police car. And so we have the quarrel. We have that negativity that is pushing you to a point where you maybe are needing to go deep within and recognize that this one sword is important, that this one stuff is important. All the stuff around is like pulling you into many directions. And you are here then getting the six when we calculate it together. And the six, of course, is Gemini. Gemini is doing something to you. Gemini is the mind. Gemini is the messenger, right? Mercury. And so you're getting a message that you got to really hold on to your own energy, not to another one. Never hold on to someone that is not worth you holding on to. Then comes on the position of the High Priestess. The Ace of Swords. Look at that. So you have the answer. Intuitive, you know that one thought is helping you to come into your center. And look how beautiful she stands here. And the Ace of Swords is pointing directly at her. And this is the answer, right? The Ace of Swords, the intuition... That one sword that's pointing up, that one sword that's pointing up. And it's called Lord of the Root of the Powers of Air. Wow. Right? So create affirmations that are bringing you into your center. And like Jordan Peterson always says in his lectures, it's like, do you have the responsibility? Do you have the guts to overcome all these negativities and here you have the four swords pointing down which is then the responsibility or that material uh, problem uh, the number four is the square that materialness that uh, physicalness is actually pushing you down but it's this one sword that's pointing up to a higher consciousness to the higher consciousness that is always awaiting for us unless we are looking for it. It's um, something that can come down to you, of course, right? Like here with the yarn, it's can, it can come down to you and you can hold on to it. But you also need to reach up for it. Then comes on the position of the Empress, Leo, which here is the card number 11. And Leo, La Force is talking to you about finding the strength, like I said, about this wild side in us. Find the power to give birth to the infinite power that she's holding here in her head. And you are recognizing now that she's giving birth, and that's why she's looking to the right, and that's the right spinning path, the everyday readings that I'm do, doing and the readings from uh, left to right, which you get today, right? And also she is facing the right spinning path, that human path, that's what it is, right? And the left spinning path, which you are sitting towards the left, is the soul path. And that's why you're getting that on your full moon, because on your full moon you're getting that opposite energy. That's Capricorn, is giving you the light. And you have to go to Capricorn. It's almost like you have to meet Capricorn. Otherwise, it's like, where's the growth cycle? If you just yourself, which is in your new moon, then you have sun and new moon in your sign. There is no challenge. And the soul loves to have a challenge. And so here you have the challenge to find within you this portal. And of course, this one. So you have three times the one. And you have a one here. And in this sacred geometrical form, there's a one pointing up as well, right? So that one is giving you then here in the uh, 14, when I calculate five and nine together, I get the 14. I get a one and a four, the responsibility to know that now I have also four ones um, here, or actually five, because we have in the stuff the one, and here one, and here one, one. 
So you have five ones, and when I calculate the 14, and then the five is left. So the five is that challenge, right? A challenge that you have to recognize again and again and again. Then comes on the position of Gemini, the lovers, the two of Pentacles and the two of Pentacles is Jupiter in Capricorn. And this is really interesting because I check sometimes what's going on up in the sky with the other planets, and there is one where since the 18th of May we have a square. Jupiter is in a square to Pluto, but it's also going into a retrograde until October in Capricorn. So you getting the balancing act of Jupiter and Capricorn, the juggling of the life, the up and down, and the, is she like this or is she like that, right? The white and the red and the infinite eight that is here, the infinite eight that is here, that makes us sometimes lose ourselves in this. If there is an infinite world, well, I mean... How can we understand that? And so life sometimes brings these challenges, and that's what Gemini is bringing to you. It's bringing you a challenge in noticing what true love really means. True love means to accept the bright and the dark and not to judge it, never, right? And so here the same. She is uniting with this wild beast, and she's recognizing that the wild has to be incorporated, otherwise it's controlling us. Then comes on the position of the Queen of Cups, which is in the center of the reading, right? The court card, the Hermit, the number nine. And the number nine comes in here with this nine nine portal to you. The Hermit, look at him, he is facing the left spinning cycle. His hand is in the center where he's creating the light, where he's creating from deep within the union, the tantric union that he is uh, bringing to us. And so this love or this yarn or this connection, right? The love that threads um, souls together, right? That brings two souls together is felt first deep within you, but then also, of course, felt within the dualities and the um excitement that brings these two extreme opposite energies right and so here you have a virgo uh challenging you or inspiring you to go deeper with your healing because she is the one that is actually able to love herself without a partner because that's what the tantric union is bringing to you here on your position then on the position of <laughs> the chariot came the magician. And the magician, right, I showed you the staff. So there is this deep connection now that you have a challenge in the singularity, in that oneness, in that one sword, in that number one, in the staff with the five, right? And here in the one of the 14 of the responsibility and so you notice all of a sudden that your success is dependent on the magician's push to go into the one always go into that which makes you realize that the one the higher spiritual the union the yoga the yin and yang which is also creating in itself then the dualities a one circle and you will be successful in the way you are wanting to bring love to the world by using the magician's power by using the staff right and so here you are getting a very strong message to you from the magician who is coming up on your position be like the magic successfully magic or magically successful then comes on the position of the moon. The moon, I have here an oracle card, which is many masks, the authentic self, the number 38. 
So notice now the 18, which is also 9, and is opposite of Virgo, right? The moon and Virgo, Pisces and Virgo are opposite of each other. And it's really interesting um, to see that uh, the opposite is the biggest challenge uh, to reach. That's why <clears throat> they always say when you are wanting to be in a relationship, find a partner that is completely opposite of you. But it's not always easy, right? Because you learn really the most in that relationship. So here you have the three. The three is the empress, is that new birth um, or that new energy that wants to come through. And the eight, the infinite with this eight, the 18 in here. Calculated together, we get a 12. And the 12 is the one the magician and the two, the high priestess. Magically use your intuition and then create something here. But we have here the authentic self that is freeing itself from all these masks and that's what actually the moon does. That's that longing to evolve, the longing to come out of the water, through land, up into the sky, into the age of Aquarius. And so you are asked to find through this deep longing within you because the three stays to unite energies here with Leo to unite something that is helping you to bring that wild side within you into a higher consciousness and then let those masks fall right and so here is this kind of energy speaking very strongly to you then, of course, on the position of the um, chariot, which is in the moon, came the magician. So the magician is going to help you to really then, with the 12, right, help you to let fall these masks. And the magician had the stuff, and with the stuff you take over and rule, and you bring yourself into the six. And you will recognize all of a sudden why then Gemini is coming and bringing to you a deeper self-love, a self-love that you have to manage, however you're going to manage that, because it's important to incorporate the dualities all the time, because they are literally functioning in your body, they are functioning in nature, they are functioning everywhere, except sometimes in our own brain. And then comes on the position of the sun <clears throat> here, the number 29, the water and the creation. And that's you, right? So the sun, which is in Gemini. And on Gemini, we had the two of pentacles. And the two of pentacles here with the two in the 29, it's a two-two. And so you recognize that the energy that you are getting through the sun, through the two people that are here in this card, you noticing now that there is a liberation if you bring yourself into the hermit, into this, what you have learned on the position of the Queen of Cups, that you are needing to find a deep, deep, deep self-love, deep within yourself, and you recognize in that case, that you not belong to no one, but to yourself. And in the old age, we start noticing then those kind of things. And the masks fall automatically. And you get through the 29 and 11, right? And then you have an 11, 11 through incorporating things that are so difficult sometimes to think of putting my hands on a lion's mouth right on this wild side within me and that's what again jordan peterson says like face your fears face the dragon face that which makes you afraid the most but when you face it then at least you faced it and here you have come into a really peaceful moment because look she has six uh doves flying and she is arriving in a deep, deep healing phase. And it seems to me that now this is what's speaking here. Look at that. So the swirling, she's now stepping forward because here she's 
hidden. We can't see her, but now she's coming out and she's like, in my age, I'm going to show myself even more because I'm going to disappear soon. I'm going to go back to the spiritual realm. And so I'm going to show myself. But here, when we are young, we be so, oh, look at me, particularly you, who is the healer, right? You are the queen of cups. You are holding the cup, the holy grail. And here now you enter the water and show yourself and you are recognizing something very profound that you are really uh, allowing to have this self-love, the self-love of coming and going, having within you like the 14 of the um, temperance, right? The coming and the going of everything and here she's actually letting both of them go none of them are landing they're both actually leaving or you could also say both of them are landing so you have arrived right you have arrived in your healing very strong very powerful and then wow on the position of the universe of the world you get the fool then you can step into this new adventure into a new life maybe you are wanting to to step off right step off and go into the unknown and this is what's tying back then again here to this card right because this came up on the position of the fool and it's venus in aquarius and aquarius the age is now showing you what real beauty means right what real beauty is about it's an inner beauty and it's not this fighting and this quarreling and this like well i'm right and these are the five senses these are the tests that the universe is bringing to us all the time and so you are stepping off and you are stepping into the healing of this right very clear but you have six swords so then recognize that you have here the number six which is gemini and again the number six is with gemini you had here the dualities in the end and the dualities is the lovers so recognize that you are learning a big deal here to be the healer and to let go of these masks and to know that the yarn that is bringing the universe together look at that it's almost like yes you're walking now into this incredible space right and that you are in the end learning the five five portal to overcome um all the things that are necessary to overcome because that's why we come here right this is why we come and so you are really wow you're really growing into the healer that you're meant to be because the universe needs that the universe wants that and so here it comes and she swings look at her i mean the, these cards are so powerful right i just alistair crawley's card in itself are like wow are like very powerful but see now that you have really let go of that mask you have dived into the healing power and now you can begin a completely new journey what a beautiful reading so i hope i see you in the next one because then the sun is going to be in your sign so um the next step that i see in then the next reading is going to be this right you're arriving at a very powerful stage in your healing right the queen of cups has grown into a mature healer and now she can either arrive or let go completely until then i thank you so much for being with me namaste